it's haunting to think that they're probably not alive anymore. Hey everybody, Nick here. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Nick. I'm a professional photographer. I've been shooting professionally for three years, though I've had a camera in my hand for the last 16. And for those of you who are back for another video, thank you guys again for joining me. Make sure you guys are all subscribed. Today was supposed to originally be the, we're gonna test out these light metering apps, but something happened. So some of you might know this about me, but I collect antique photos. Um, you can get antique photos off of eBay or at your local antique store. I have a really nice antique bookstore called Dickens Alley in my town. All of these were picked up at the Lincoln Park Emporium. I just, they had a box. It was like 15 bucks for the whole box and I said, okay. And I bought the box and I kind of went through it a little bit, but I wanted to share it with you guys because there are some really, really remarkable antique photos. Some of them are dated, which is really cool. Some of them are photographer branding and we're gonna Google search them and see if we can get any results. But a lot of the images are pretty haunting, especially the really old images. So right here, I've got a stack right here. These are the what I can calculate to be the oldest images in the collection. Um, there are various different types of duro types, tin types, things along those lines. Looks like some of them are glass plate press transfers, like this one here. I turned the light down so there shouldn't be as much glare. Let's find out. Yeah, you can see that one. So this one says Mr. and Mrs. George Kramer, it looks like. This one was taken in... Oh, well, it's cut off on the bottom, but it says Chillicothe, Missouri, I believe. Or we have a little tiny baby tintype. Now, you guys know my tintype videos, and I will link that up there. But as you can see, this is a, it looks to be, and it feels almost like it's a dry plate. I'm not 100% sure, but this size here is actually what's called a gem size. So the tintypes that I shoot, this is called a quarter plate. And the way tin type sizing works is you have full plate, which is eight by 10, half plate, which is five by seven, and then quarter plate, which is four by five. Now I shoot four by five, but this is gem size. So this would go in a locket or a piece of jewelry or in a little tiny little frame. And it looks like just two ladies sitting in their dresses. It's haunting to think that they're probably not alive anymore. And this one here, this guy's got some crazy eyes. He's got the crazy eyes going on. That one actually looks like it was probably shot on glass and transferred to a piece of paper. This one has seen better days as it is slowly starting to fade into oblivion. Oh, we have another tin type. I can't tell what's going on in this one, but it looks like some kind of spiritualism or something going on. Or a wedding, I don't know. What do you guys think? Leave a comment. It's kind of a weird looking photo. And this one's actually matted, and the matting has still remained. It's not a tin type. And actually, if you look really, really close, you can see that the photographer added a little bit of pink in the cheeks with some paint. I hope you guys can see that. They're saying this one is a tin type. Um, yeah, it feels like a tin type. And it just is dated 1800s at some point. And we have another tin type. This one's a little bit bigger. Again, the photographer went in and added blush on the ladies, on the ladies' face there. I hope you guys can see that. And painted that blush on that the little bit of red blush after this was developed and fixed. And we've got this one here. And this one's a big piece. It is two children, and it says Towelies Studios. 65 and a half Center Street, Cumberland, Frostburg, and Lanomangdom, MD. I'm not very good at geography. I'll have to look up what MD is later. So this one is in E.E. E. Craig, Warsaw, Indian, Cincinnati Gallery. And the description on the back says 1775, but the photography wasn't around in 1775. Great grandmother of Here's a photo of a small child 
in a cool little outfit, very Victorian looking. It does say late 1800s child white dress and bonnet in front of fence. That's the description the Emporium put on the back of the photo. So this video actually is probably going to have to be broke down because we're still in the antique section here. I just kind of reorganized. I didn't realize how many tin types came in this lot and I really want to go through these because they're really, really cool looking. Um, this one looks like, almost looks like it's staged. It looks like it's actually in a studio because the the way the fence post is sat and the way the backdrop comes down, it actually looks like it's in a studio. And here, this one also looks like it's a studio. I really wish I knew who the photographer was because these are absolutely beautiful images. This guy looks like an outlaw. He legit looks like an outlaw. Uh, the photographer did add a little bit of blush to his cheeks. If you guys can identify him as an outlaw, let me know because I'm curious. And then we have a little, a uh, bunch more gem, little, little gem sized ones. This man is in a little tie. Out of the way box. This one's in a little tie. And this one is of a small child. Um, her eyes are completely white. That's terrifying. And this one is a toddler. The cheeks have also been painted. And this one actually looks like it's starting to fade or it almost looks ghostly. Oh, I hope these photos aren't haunted. Here's a couple and they look grumpy and that's probably because they had to sit still for so long. These gem ones are beautiful. I want to get a gem camera. We should get a gem camera, you guys. Again, a little bit of blush on the cheeks. And this one, oh, that's just the tag on the back. Here's a Victorian dressed lady. And then we have some bigger ones, what would be considered wallet size now. Looks like he has a stick across his back. And what the older photographers would do is they actually had a metal rod that come up and then a piece that would go around your neck, like a cup, in order to hold you still for the long process of the long exposure. That one actually looks like a, a hand painted backdrop behind him. Two Victorian children. One of them's dressed really nice and, well actually they're both kind of dressed nice, as far as I can tell. I turned the ring light down, that way we didn't have as much glare so I could share all these with you. Two ladies and a man, all their cheeks have had blush added to them. And then the last of the tin types that we have is of this gentleman here. So I found this one. This one's really cool. It just says two dogs vintage. It doesn't say kind of where it happens. One of them looks like a pit bull terrier and one almost looks like a chow, but I can't really tell. It's not big enough to be a chow. And then the photos I'm really kind of excited about and we're gonna do some Google searching on these because they're actually marked by the photographer. So this one is P Ball Photography, Mansfield, Ohio. Let's Google him real quick. So P. Val Photography does not come up with anything. And I think I have a few of those images. Ooh. So this is another Victorian looking one. I'll have to look because it has a three cent George Washington stamp on the back. So we can at least get a date on it. And the photography is A. Wismore Photographer also from Mansfield, Ohio. So let's figure that out. So the three cent George Washington green stamp is worth $25. The purple ones are like 15 grand. I got super excited there for a second. But 1914 is the 1912, early 1910s, that kind of era. So let's take a look if we can't find this photographer. I found it, the A. Wisemore. So in 1776, Centennial Celebration, Mansfield, Richmond Co., Ohio, so Mansfield, Ohio. He offered to take a free picture of every person over the age of 60 who had been a resident of the county of at least 50 years. So in 1903, the entire collection was purchased by the Historical Society. So it says that there are 302 photos missing. So the inscription, the photos have an inscription on the back of either an A, A. Wismore photographer, Northwest Corner, 
So we don't have the northwest corner one. I'm gonna have to bookmark this page because I'm gonna email them about the ones I have from that collection. So here's another pea ball image from Mansfield, Ohio. And it says Martha Eller Bauer. So we actually have a name on this one, Martha Ella Bauer. So this one does, sadly does not have a photographer name on it. It's just a really cool photo. Ooh. So here we go, A. Wisemore photographer, Mansfield, Ohio, another Wisemore. And this guy's got crazy Google eyes. It looks pretty scary to me. This one says P-Ball, another P-Ball photography one. And they feel almost like business cards. Like the photo is, it's on photographic paper and it's almost like it's taped to this piece of cardboard paper. This one does not have a name on it, sadly. But the lady, again, has also got kind of the crazy eyes going. And here's a neat, another P-Ball. He's becoming one of my favorite photographers. And this one has a, a, two, a red two cent George Washington stamp on the back. So let's Google that real quick, you guys. The red two cent stamp on the back of this one is worth like a dollar or two dollars. I was hoping that I might have struck it rich. Ooh, new photographer. We have one. It is photographed by H.W. Seibert. Eastside Water Street Deck Tour Illinois. This one has definitely started to fade, but it is a couple and a grumpy old man. He kind of looks like the bad guy from Ghostbusters 2. We're gonna Google that guy real quick. So according to this, Skybird is a Canadian photographer. I have a listing on the Employment Bureau on Google in St. Louis. And we have another new photographer. It's e-coding photographer, Knoxville, Illinois. Negative preserved, duplicates furnished at any time. And it is of a man and a woman. Looks like they're standing, sass sitting in a studio. Let's Google this guy real quick. So it looks like someone was doing research because they found a photo of a Union soldier with that same photographer on the back of it. And it was dated 1865. So really, I couldn't find a lot of information on him. What I did find though, is there is a photograph of a Union soldier from 1865 that he took. And it makes me wonder how old this photo is. So here's another e-coding one, which we had just discussed. And this guy, he looks about the fashion of the mid to late 1800s. And this one says, P. Levet of Bellevue, Ohio. This one is starting to fade. You can see time has taken its toll, but it is, from what I can tell, an old gentleman making a really funny face. So I'm gonna Google that photographer. So this one's a little bit interesting. I was looking really close and it says, photographed by Miss P. Lievet. So I Googled it and it comes up with Henrietta Swan Leviet which is the same last name, but it doesn't come up with Miss P. Leviet. And a female photographer in that day and age would have been pretty rare. I, this one's really astounding to me. Um, I really hope that some of you guys, maybe in Ohio, or maybe someone who know, has more photographic knowledge than I do, knows who this is and give me more information. I'm gonna do some internet sleuthing of my own because I'm really, really curious about that. Because it's a female photographer in that day and age it was extremely rare. And I really wanna know more about this person. So this one has a name on it. It says Chillicloth, Missouri. I can't really read the name. It's kind of been blurred out. But this one looks like a, a really old, old Victorian photo that's been put on photographic paper. So it would have been a glass plate that was actually transferred much like a plastic film negative now. Here's another A. Wisemore. These photos are fun because there's actually a group of people trying to gather all the photos together and figure out what happened to the rest of his work. So I'm definitely gonna scan these and send them out to them. That way I know whether or not they have those in the collection or not. And if they don't, I can probably ship them the photos and add it to the collection so they'll be archived properly. But take a look at that. So this one doesn't have a name on it actually but it does have the two cent George Washington stamp on the back. Actually, it says E coating. It's in broad on the very bottom. It's kind of like punched into it. That young lady. This actually looks like a classic Western style photo almost. Let's see here. 
South Locust St. Chillicloth, Missouri. Someone put a sticker over the photographer's name. That's annoying to me. I hope it doesn't tear as I try to pull this sticker off. ES, man. People's purses back then sucked, but classic gunslinger look almost. Like you almost see the look wide herb looking like that. And that'll go in the unknown pile, which I'm sad that I have an unknown pile. I really wish I could identify all these photographers. To give them credit, I mean, these photos have been around, some of them, you know, almost a hundred years. This one doesn't have a name on it either. It's just a simple portrait, a bust portrait. We've got another two cent George Washington that says E coating on it. It's kind of been kind of plastered out, but that guy's mutton chops are awesome. We have another E coating. This lady looks like a schoolhouse teacher. I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. And this is a young gentleman. It looks like I have some stains on the photo. That makes me sad, but it is what it is. So I was just plugging around on the internet a little bit more to try to find out more about these photographers that we've discussed. And sadly, some of them photos that we can't identify who actually shot them. I would really like your help on this, you guys. If you know who these photographers are, I know they're, they're long gone. But if you know, if they're from your local town, like some of the towns I mentioned, or you know anything about the photographer or have information, please relay it to me. I'm really, really curious. One of the things I love about taking photos, and we kind of discussed a little bit of that in my vlog, but the other thing I like to do is that you capture a moment in time. And that's one of the things I love about taking tintypes is these things are old. These things are over a hundred years old and they still look beautiful. They still look pretty much as good as they did the day they were taken. And the tintypes I take will last over a hundred years as well. And we're capturing these moments in history as photographers. So I really want to try to find more information on these photographers here. So let's go over the names again real quick. We've got P. Bahal, which is P. And then the last name is B. A-H-L, um, photographer in Mansfield, Ohio. The next, one that, the next one that I want to look into, and I think I can contact this center for this photographer, is, is A. Wisemore from Mansfield, Ohio. And then E. Coding, E period, C-O-D-D-I-N-G from Knoxville, Illinois. H.W. Cybird. D. Carter, Illinois, D-E-C-A-T-U-R. And lastly, the one that I really want to find the most information about because, again, female photographers in that day and age were super, super rare, is Miss P. Leviet of Belleville, Ohio. So if you guys know anything about these photographers or you can point me in the right direction or get me contact information or anything along those lines, that would be so wonderful. I would love to know more about who took these photos. I would love to look more into their work, see what all they did in their lifetime, what art they created, what things they did, their, their history. Photography and history go pretty hand in hand ever since the invention of photography. Some of our greatest moments as mankind have been captured through the lens of a photographer and I would be ecstatic to find out more about this lot of photos that I have. Now, I did say we're gonna have to break this up into two videos. The next video will probably be in a few weeks just because I wanna go through these and find the coolest images. I have a whole box here, that's full, and then I have a bunch over here, but to give you an idea of what we're dealing with, look at these two cool gents. So that's something to look forward to, you guys. I mean, we have, you know, this looks like this actually, I'm gonna show this one, because this is the same format as my Kodak Pocket Camera One, which I talk about all the time and we still haven't done a video on. But it is a lady in front of a boat. It looks like 1920s, which would be accurate for that camera. 1910s, 1920s, actually. And look at this cool thing. This is a modern reproduction. It says Crystal Archive on the back of it, but I have a picture of a train crash. So yeah, so in a few weeks, you guys, we're gonna go through the paper photos or the, 
I believe that they're between 1910 and 1960. We're gonna go through some of these, look at all the different fashions, the different photographic techniques used. Some of these are amateur, some of these are home shots, some of them are professional. And we can get a really good look at how photographic technique has changed. It hasn't changed a whole lot. I mean, look at our poses. I still use that pose, it's a good pose. So as many things that have changed in photography, a lot of things have stayed exactly the same. We have, I still do couples photos just like that. That's, that's amazing to me. Some of these photos, most of them that are in front of me right now are over a hundred years old. And the style, the technique, it's, it's all there. Photography has come so far as far as technology has, but posing and facial expressions and looks, they almost look exactly the same. It's, you guys remember my little video on photography etiquette when I lost track of my outline and kind of went off track. That's what we're doing right now. And I tell you, I'm just, I'm so excited to have shared this with you guys, um, this whole lot. I'm gonna keep my eye out on eBay. Maybe we can do this more often. This is a lot of fun. We can play internet sleuth. We can try to find who these photographers are. Maybe we can identify the people in the photos. That would. It would be so awesome if we could identify the people in the photos and re and then we could return the photos to their family, like, a, like an heirloom. Like, it's just amazing to me that all of this is laying in front of me. So yeah, in a couple weeks, we're gonna go through the box over here and some of the larger photos I have here. They're more modern photos. They're not, I wanted to go through the real old stuff first. This video took way longer than anticipated, so that will jump. So then we'll jump into the more modern stuff and go over that. That'll be a few weeks. I have a couple videos still between then and now. So thank you guys again so much for joining me on this trip. Uh, if you know anything about these photographers, again, let me know. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you guys know as soon as I upload. I upload once a week generally. Sometimes you get a bonus video like you did last week. All my social media links are gonna be down below as well as my email so you can contact me if you know anything about these photographers or the people in the photos and I can try to track them down and we can do a video about that. So thank you guys again. You guys have a wonderful night and I will see you on the flip side. Bye.